Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where understanding and knowledge fortifies our experience. Today, we're going to mix it up a little bit and go back into space. And we're going to walk through the steps of what it'll take to create a space empire. When you start off in space, you start off in a space pod. It's pretty simple. There's a control seat up here in the front, a survival kit over here, and they provide you a few items to get started. We have this nifty little pistol, probably won't use it, but we also have a bit of ice, a hydrogen tank, and an oxygen tank, and your basic tools. To exit the pod, you just click or hit the F key to open the door. I'm going to turn off this air vent though. Don't want to waste any of our oxygen. And I recommend always closing the door behind you before you open the next one. That way, even though you see a lot of the air being released, it will still have a certain amount of pressure inside the cabinet. Now on here, we have this conveyor angular block that is feeding through your oxygen tank and again through a hydrogen engine which is connected to your O2 H2 generator. In here you can find the ice and it can be direct deposited. Then we have all ion drives connected. Somewhere hidden in here is also a battery or two. And then on the very bottom you have a gyro. This is what allows you to steer in different directions while you're in space. That's the general gist of this, but we are going to modify it a little bit along the way. Well, I think for starters, what we need to do is find us some basic ore so we can do some of these modifications. On this pod, we don't have a good antenna. We also don't have any type of ore detection. And we have very basic refining skills because we only have the survival kit. Along with simple assembly of certain components because we don't have a basic assembler or assembler on this thing. Usually when you start out, you're fairly close to an asteroid to begin with. So all we got to do is make sure, yep, the vent's still off. Go through the doors. And when you're in space the entire time, you might want to have your jetpack on or you won't really have any control. I'm going to, hmm, I forgot to switch my toolbars. Nope, that's not it. Nope. That's your grinder. And this is your drill. So if you right click on a drill, it won't create any ore to pick up. But if you left click on the drill, it'll start harvesting the ore. What I like to do is hold the F key while I'm drilling so you don't lose as much ore by it floating away. Unfortunately, in space, it will float away on you once in a while. Won't really affect anything, but it'll take you longer to get enough ore to come back with. When you use a ship drill, it doesn't have that same effect, and the ore directly goes through your system instead of floating away. For now, I'm filling up my inventory with enough ore to at least start the modifications to this pod. That should do it for now. Just grab that one. And for this, we're going to put it directly in the survival kit. But if you wanted to, you can access the survival kit by going through the cargo container or the hydrogen oxygen generator. If you hold the control shift key and click on the bags, It'll give you a thousand and I typically simply do a thousand when I start out because we're going to have to do quite a bit of ore refining before we'll have enough material to do the modifications. 
Now let's see, where do we want to put things on this ship? I think we'll put a basic refiner on top. It could probably lay across the hydrogen generator itself. And connect to the H2O2 generator. Just start out by creating the steel blocks, some computer chips. And we're definitely going to have to put some solar panels on here, so I'm creating some solar cells as well. Solar panels are going to require solar cells, the construction blocks, girders, and a few computer chips. Inventory full. Let's just deposit the rest of this ore. And it looks like we have built quite a few of the components that we need so far. We may have to do one more drilling or so in order to get enough refined ore to build everything. See, if I get rid of this slope here, I think we can put two solid blocks so we can mount the solar cells. If you want to match the color, all you have to do is hit the shift key and the P key. This will allow you to build the blocks in the same exact color and texture of whatever block you were aiming at when you selected it. Now with these two blocks, all we have to do is install a couple of solar panels. I'm just putting one on each side and that should be efficient enough for the ship because we're not going to continuously cruise in this ship and draw the power anyways. Let me just clear this side. And usually if I'm building more than one of the same item, I will start the items and then go ahead and assemble all the extra components that I'm currently missing. That way you don't have to continuously go back and forth and back and forth to your assembler. And there you have it. Both solar panels are connected. Now if we go check on these solar panels and see what they're producing for power, it's probably not going to be much because we're not facing the sun. If you check your battery, you'll see the current input is about 4.73 and your current output is 12. So we are drawing more electricity than what's going into the battery and essentially we will run out of power. This solar panel is not even producing anything. But if we get back into the controls and rotate our ship just like that, you'll notice there'll be a huge increase in the power. So now we're getting 75 watts from one and 47 from the other. And our current input for our batteries is about seven times higher than the output. This is important, so while you're working on other things, your batteries aren't running low on you. Okay, next item. I think we need the basic refiner next. That would help us increase the speed to refine our ore. And we're going to use it later when we add a drill to this pod. The basic refiner and basic assembler use just components that the survival kit can produce. So you don't have to worry about already having a full assembler in order to build them. Of course, it may make it faster because you can add modifications to it.
that looks about right over here and then let's clear these out i think just so we have extra material And before we do the basic assembler, let's see if we can actually build the antenna. I don't think we can because certain components have to be built from the basic assembler. In order to access an antenna, you have to build a beacon first. So if we can build this beacon, then we'll be able to unlock the antenna. Beacons use somewhat the same components but after looking at it, since we will have to create the large steel tubes and such, we will need this basic assembler installed first. That should do it. Might look kind of obscure at this point because the basic assembler is somewhat sticking straight up. But when we install the antenna, it'll be about the same height. Now for this beacon, we're probably going to have to mine a little bit more material just to start building it. I know we definitely need to create some steel. Even though there's no resources within this basic assembler, it's pulling the resources from the survival kit because we have it selected. And if you have extra material from something else, such as the ramps, you can now recycle those in this basic assembler. Just click on disassembly and then disassemble all, or you can individually select what you want to disassemble. And you get that resource back in order to create the next elements. It might save you time overall when you first start out from having to hand mind a lot of different things. It does take a few minutes, but it is better than having to drill and drill and drill and make trips back and forth. Well, let's see if we collected enough from the interior plates to create all the antenna comps that we needed. And it looks like it worked out. I don't think we'll have enough for the large steel tubes so we will still have to mine some after this. And after mining one more round, we were able to collect enough to create this beacon. Now, your antenna is available. Pretty simple. This antenna is going to be important because it extends our range for ore detection. I mean, sure, you'll be able to find enemies as well, or friendlies, but it primarily helps when you're starting out in order to detect the critical ore that you're looking for. Hmm, I don't think I have enough steel for this. We're just going to put this antenna above this middle ion drive in the back. Oh, not enough material. If we take down the beacon, which we don't really need on our ship, then we could get pretty close to what this antenna requires. And there you have it. Now with the antenna installed, we should be able to install an ore detector and it'll tell us whether this asteroid has any important resources on it or not. I know by taking this piece off, you lose your pressurization of your cabin, but my plan is typically to save oxygen by just using my oxygen bottle instead of continuously pressurizing the cabin over and over and over again. 
This will save you ice in the long run, especially if it's hard to find in your area. Just need a few extra pieces of steel here. First starting out is kind of tedious because you have to mine everything by hand until you get to a certain point of being able to add a drill. I'm not focusing on putting the drill on first because I don't plan on staying at this specific asteroid. I'm going to worry about the drill as soon as we get to an asteroid that has the proper resources we're looking for. Okay. With the ore detector on, I think that's everything basic that you would need to try to hunt down some precious ore. What we're going to be looking for is specifically cobalt and silver. With cobalt, you can increase your tool efficiency and it'll allow you to create a full assembler, a refinery, and hydrogen boosters if you need them. Among other things, of course. See how our batteries are doing? Yep, pretty decent power still. Our hydrogen engine is still off. If you leave your hydrogen engine running, you will run out of ice fairly quick. On the ore detector, I turn it all the way up for its range and make sure that broadcasting through antennas is on. If there is any precious ore on here, it should automatically pop up on our screen, but I didn't see any. Just going to disassemble these. And one last thing, we almost forgot to put a set of landing gear on here. We don't necessarily want to get to the next asteroid and float away while we are trying to collect other resources. The landing gear also should unlock other certain elements. Now we should be good with this. Well, that's the basic setup I start with. If you have any other suggestions or tips and tricks on how you get started, please feel free to leave your comments in the comment section. Up next, we're going to go through finding the right resources to really kick off our empire. As always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode. I appreciate it.